Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dirty Gaming and the next instalment of Hunting for Mage Blood. Now, there's a few things to go through in this episode, uh, from selling loot to failed strategies to fun and rewarding strategies. Um, so as you can see from the time on the clock, which I've changed the colours just to make it a bit more visible, uh, we're now at 16 hours and 18 minutes. And the last time we left, I was 18 and a half hours. Now, as you can see, we've gone on almost eight hours from the end of the last episode. And so what I wanted to do was go through what I've been doing, which, as I said, is various things from selling loot, trying things that didn't work to trying things that I think worked really well. What I'm going to do is change the format of the video. So before I was recording the intro, before I started the farming strategy, and then at the end, I'd go over how the strategy went, what things I tweaked and why. Uh, but that kind of duplicated some of the content. So I think it makes sense to actually complete all of what I want to do first. And then at least I know exactly what strategy I used and what I needed to tinker and what worked and didn't. And we can sort of cover it all off in one. It gives me a bit more time to talk about other things without making a video too long. Um, the other thing I've decided to do is just remove maps from both the cost and the income. Um, every strat I've done, I've oversustained quite heavily, but not every map sells really easily. And they don't necessarily sell with the prices that PoE um, Ninja says, and it doesn't necessarily work with Excellence Next. Um, so all I've done is just remove maps from the cost of the strategy and then I've removed them from the income. I'm over sustaining pretty heavily. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm favoring a map such as Crimson Temple. Once I can put no more maps in my map tab because it's full. So if we go over here, uh, have a look at maps. I've got 573 maps. And as you can see, ones that I'm favoriting um, or favorited in the past are starting to fill up. So if we go to Crimson Temple, it's completely full. Um, and I've got two overflow here. So now I've changed my um, favor map to strand and I'll keep doing that and fill them up. This does two things. One, it allows me to just sell a tab in bulk and then bring that currency into excellence next. Two, it allows me pretty good selection of what map I want to do for content. Um, so I've got strand favored at the minute with dunes as my second in case that decides to drop. Um, and then I'll just fill them up at least then, like I said, I can decide what content I want to do and I'll have a map to suit. Um, or enough to get the ball rolling. So if I wanted to do a toxic sewer strat, 29 is more than enough to start. And because I'm over sustaining, I won't have a problem with that map. So as long as I've got 10 to 20 of any map that I might want to run, I don't feel like I'm ever going to need to buy a map. So I'm not going to include them in the cost because for me, it's just making things longer and more confusing. This isn't really a, this is exactly what this currency makes per strat. It's this is what I'm trying to do to get a mage blood and this is a cost. Um, and because I'm putting everything into one dump tab, it's easier just to track hourly rates. Um, so I am buying all of my materials from this tab and this tab here. So when I do that, if I go into my Excellence Next and then I click Refresh when I've done it, then obviously the currency will go down. And then when I get to the end of the session, I can see where I was compared to my original starting point, And that gives me my hourly rate pretty easy. Um, I am including Sanctum, as I say, because... It's not always worth doing, to be honest. If you don't get raw divines, I don't think Sanctum is worth running, but you do get offered them a lot. And when you get two or three, considering a full Sanctum run takes, let's say 20 to 25 minutes. Um, if you can get three divines, even every third Sanctum run, the whole thing's going to be at least five divines an hour, which is better than any strategy I've done. Um, and it is guaranteed. You're always going to get like stacked X, Awakened Sextants, Chaos, if you don't get um, divines. So let's start with dealing with the loot I had at the end of the last episode. So everything sold really easily other than the map. So I had like essences, which are leveled up to deafening where it's profitable to do so. Uh, sold them in bulk for either divines or chaos, whatever um, I had enough of. We had some harvest life force, which I've used the blue one. I've used some of it to re-roll bad deafening essences into good ones. Purple I've still got because I haven't got enough to sell a divine. I may go back to harvest later, which is why I've not sold any, or I might use these to re-roll some stuff, do some craft, and there's lots of stuff we could do with this that's going to be more than like the 11k or whatever it is um, for a divine. Um, and then all of these Eldritch currencies sell super quick, and as you can see, I'm already stacking loads up again from running the altars. So these, I think, were selling for something like 31 for a divine. Um, yeah, 31 grand embers for a divine, and I had two lots of these I had about 65 of these so i could get two divines for my embers got about three divines for me a life force i had um a few tainted fusions and currencies and things like that all this stuff sold really well and really quick same with sextants they sell in bulk for about i think it's about 70 for a divine yet yeah, 70 for a divine so i think i had 150 of these so it was really really easy to convert money into both divines and chaos 
And then if I got over 2000 chaos, I was just listing it up for divines and selling it and people whisper you straight away. Um, so these were like when I sold them 510 cows for two divines was flying off the shelf. And that's what I was doing because I don't want to sit on too much of one currency. I say the only thing I had issues selling was the blight maps and they weren't as difficult as I thought. I was going to go on to TFT to sell them, but I thought what I'll do first while I'm sorting out all my other loot is price some tabs up. I think this was actually 10 to see this one. Um, I think I've put it to nine, so I was selling something else um, for bulk. So I put my T16s in here for 14C. Uh, after about 20 minutes, someone whispered me for one. I asked how many you wanted, and he took the lot. Same thing happened. I put my 15s and my 14s in this 10 Chaos tab here. Again, they sold really, really quickly. The only ones I'm left with are 13s. Oh, sorry, no. I sold my 15s for 10, and I'm left with 13s and 14s in here, which are quite hard to sell in bulk without 15s and 16s to to pad them out but at some point i might go to um tft and try and sell these even if they're like three chaos each it's still money that i'm i can get where they're just sitting on my tab doing not a lot other than that everything else sold and i spent about an hour just over an hour selling everything getting everything converted um tidying up my tabs and things like that so i'm ready to run with the next strategy um so that took me on to about nine and three quarter hours and i'd settled on my next strategy i'm not going to go through it in very much detail because it was rubbish um i was essentially trying to get tons and tons out of the altars by going growing hordes and grand designs the idea was to rush maps really really quickly try and get them done in one and a half to two minutes that means i can turn over sanctum and i can turn over um invitations so even though i might not get a ton out of the map everything from altars sells really easily invitations sell super quick and sanctum is guaranteed good loot the issue i had is you get lots of stuff dropping from the altars uh, and you have to pick it up because it's where your currency comes from and it still annoyingly drops in individual things. So you're probably picking up 80 things per map. So there's no way you're doing your maps in one and a half to two minutes unless you leave half the loot behind and then you're losing half your profit. Um, so in the end, that was pretty bad. Even with a div card for 100C that dropped, I was nowhere near three div an hour. I think I was like two and a half um, and I did that for a couple of hours. So that was kind of bad and not very efficient at all so that took me up to sort of 12 hours once i'd settled on the next strategy so then i thought you know what i'm gonna go and give harbinger a go it is a bit spiky with the loot because if you don't get any fracturing shards it's probably not amazing profit um, but if you can get even a few then it adds massively to your income and probably makes it worthwhile what i thought i'd do is combine that with metamorph i had quite a bit of success earlier on in the league with metamorph and catalysts do sell really well especially expensive ones uh, if you can get bulk of them to save people going to different buyers you can sell them for pretty mad prices overall even taking that into account i did it for two hours and then i looked at what dropped from purely from the metamorph i didn't have any big drops like a divine or anything like that it was just the odd bit of currency stuff that you're probably not going to sell the odd scarab things like that i probably had about one and a half divines of loot from metamorph after two hours and i was paying five cm at per gilded scarab just wasn't worth it and i was not enjoying it at all um when they were too beefy they took quite a while to kill i went from 30 percent xp to zero on one of them because he just one shot me every time i get anywhere near me overall wasn't enjoying it so again it's something i knocked on the head it did actually pay dividends in the end which i'll come on to in a bit um, but overall i didn't like the strategy so now we're kind of rolled over done another couple of hours and we're at about 14 hours or just short of 14 hours i think i did it for about an hour and 50 minutes so then I thought, right, I'm going to actually spend some time finding a good strat. I think my issue was, because I want to keep the timer ticking all the time, I was rushing to find a strat, redoing my tree, getting the making sorted. I didn't really think about whether it was that viable a strategy. Um, so I spent 15 to 20 minutes going through trade and going through period ninja to see what I could find to make some money on. That was fun because I was getting a bit burnt out of doing mechanics I didn't like. So what did I settle on? Well, what I actually went with, I wanted something to top up Harbinger. Harbinger was actually doing well for me. I was getting annulments, ancients, exalts. I had, I was getting fracturing shards. I think I had eight, ten fracturing shards drop. And overall, that was definitely, definitely worth the scarabs. And you don't have to invest a lot on the tree for Harbinger. The nodes are all close together. It's a really easy thing to spec into for not many points. Um, so I wanted something that could synergize with Harbinger that just added a bit of income, but more importantly, added some fun to the maps. And I ended up going with Breach. Gone slightly different to what most people do, uh, and I've gone all at all. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, 
the breach stones are worth more than Chaula's. I mean, I think Chaula's, you do have, if you take the nodes on the tree, chance to get like skin of the loyal. Um, like the chest pieces, and they can be worth a bit. All the tool dropped a shield that's worth about 30c. But I don't take those nodes anyway because they're too far away. Um, but 24c is what you get for a breach stone. And the compasses to get 16 uses are 30 chaos. So basically, for less than 2c a map, you guarantee your breaches are all at all. With a polished breach scab and taking it on a map device, you're going to drop at least a breach stone every map. Um, and I'll go through how many I've had from 15 maps in a moment. So I thought that's quite a nice strat because polished breach scabs are cheap. They're like 2 to 2.5 two chaos in bulk. So then what I could do was add a polished harbinger scarab to get a decent amount of harbies in the map. And then I'll take breach on the map device to get another two breaches. I'm not going to bother with the sextant that adds two additional breaches because it's too expensive. They're like 100c. With a compass being so cheap at 30c, it seems stupid to do that. Yes, you wedge more into a map, but your maps take longer. And in the long run, you're going to make less profit. So I, I didn't go for that in the end. So I bought two of these compasses. I've used one and I've got one left. And then that took me up to where we are now, 16 hours and 18 minutes. And overall, this strategy has been pretty profitable. It's around, it's difficult to say because I've been doing Sanctum. I've also had a, a divine drop whilst doing this. So overall, it's very hard to work out. The hourly, I doubt it's that much different, but it's way more fun. I would think this is about four divines an hour. When you end up getting, let's say, a couple of fracturing shards or you get a raw divine, it's going to go up to five or six an hour. So I think this strategy settles, if you're quick, at about four to five divines an hour. But you do have to get through the maps quickly and you have to get used to how to run them because you drop a load of splinters. So there's going to be footage running in the background where I got lucky and there's a node which is called Eve of Evasion where you get a 1% chance to get 10 additional breaches in your map. And I'm pretty sure I had that proc because the map took 12 to 30 minutes to run. But I ended up walking out with like eight breach stones, raw divine, lots of scabs, like tons and tons of stuff. So even though the map took 12 minutes, I earned about including the divine drop about two and a half divines from the map. Um, so there are some real, real fun aspects to run in Breach. And you get an absolute ton of monsters to kill. You can get lots and lots of Breach stones to drop from one map because every time you get a boss, it duplicates the bosses. Um, and they drop minimum of 20 splinters each. And they have a chance to drop a Breach stone, which then has a chance to get upgraded to one of the bigger Breach stones. And overall, it worked really well. It's not going to be for everyone because there is a lot of clicking because ideally you want to be picking up all the splinters and annoyingly they all drop either individually or in stacks of two or three. So there is a lot of clicking and a lot of picking up loot, but it's worth it. I've definitely made as much if not more money than the other strategies and I've had way more fun than I have in any of the other strats. So there's a couple of other things to go through um, before we sign off the video. So I'll just go through the materials you need for this strategy. So it is a tree like this where we're going to take Sharing Exile Cultures, sticking with Essences because, again, I've gone through a bit of a lucky streak with Essences where I've, nearly everyone I corrupt is turning into a special Essence that's then duplicated because it's got a Shriek in nearby. Um, it's just silly not to run these. Like, if you get one Essence that turns into a special that then duplicates, that's about 60 to 70 Chaos. It's a lot of money. Um, taking less map nodes, and I'm still stupidly over-sustaining because we're running Harbingers, um, but I don't want to take them out because we are probably going to sell maps at some point. Um, so the only breach nodes we're not taking are these ones up here because they're just too far to get to. If you're running truly, you would take these because they give you a chance to drop a breach unique item or higher chance. Whereas in Ornithal, I think it drops per what you're running. So Ornithal will drop the shield or whatever. Cholo, I assume, drops a chest piece. I don't need to take those and they're too far away. What I've also added, however, I keep forgetting to put Nico missions on the map device, so I might start sticking a scarab in, um, is this one here, which is packed with energy, which gives you 15% movement speed and 35% damage per um, kind of sulfite vein that you get in the map. And then this one here turns your sulfite into azurite at 10% of the time. Um, so you might end up just with a random 1300 azurite that you can buy a few resonators with and you can sell them. Um, it's only five points to pick up these nodes. Um, and that's why I dropped the map nodes to pick these up. But I keep forgetting to activate my Nico missions. And I have an absolute ton of them. I've got 143 to use. So I need to keep remembering. Um, I think the issue is they don't seem to stay like your... So if I select Breach on my map device, that stays every map. The Masters seem to reset. Um, unless I'm just being unlucky or doing something stupid. I'd click it, then forget to do it in the next map and Nico's not there. 
So if I keep forgetting to do that, I'm just going to buy some rusted sulfite scarab so that I know that Nico is going to appear in the map. But that's kind of cost I don't need to incur because I have so many missions. Um, like 143 red missions, it seems silly. Um, the scarabs do bring benefits in that they give you more sulfite. So when they do turn to azurite, you get more azurite. Uh, the other things to know, I mentioned about Metamorph that it paid dividends in the end. And that's because I went to Tane's lab, used the organs that I had, and I had two raw divines drop. So that obviously adds to the Metamorph profit. I still don't think it makes it worthwhile running. But it was a nice little bonus to help me get back to a decent return per hour since I did start to drop off trying these strategies uh, that didn't work. I had a really good Sanctum run where I got three Divines and lots of other loot. It's probably like almost four Divines worth of loot from Sanctum. And I had my first raw Divine drop since the first episode where I think after a couple of hours I had one drop and then I had another one drop. So yeah, I had to wait another 14 hours for my next Divine to drop in a map. And I have had lots of Exalts drop. So I've been a bit unlucky with Divines. And I think my luck is starting to turn because my essences are now starting to corrupt well. I'm finding divines in Sanctum. I'm getting better drops. I think I was probably a bit unlucky with my overall drops in the earlier episodes, which is why I think I really struggled to get over that like three and a half to four divines an hour. But this strategy I definitely have, but I don't know if the returns are any better or I've just been lucky with the drops that I've had. But I'm loving this strategy, so I'm going to carry it on. So what I'm going to do is continue this strategy and then liquidate my stash so that I can buy my first um, apothecary card. I have enough in kind of loot, but I doubt I could liquidate the 61 divines I would need because a lot of this is probably stuff that I want to wait and sell in bulk. So what I'll do is do this strat for another, use my other compass, so do another 15 maps, and then I'll easily have enough. So we'll liquidate, buy the first apothecary card, and then we'll start the next session next video and start farming for the next one so i mentioned i'd just go through the loot in terms of what you get out of these breach stones so i've run 15 maps and i'm sitting on 28 full breach stones but i did have the map where i've got 10 breaches and i think i've got eight from it so if we just had it was one even if you didn't get that it's still 21 breach stones from 15 maps and two of the maps I ran in city squares which I shouldn't have done because the breaches were terrible and half of them were taken up by buildings um but yeah so you get well over a breach stone per map so let's say you get around 30 chaos back per map for this and it costs you two chaos basically for your compass use it's actually a bit less than that and 2.2 chaos for your scab so let's say 4c and then 4c on the map device so you're spending 8c on the map device and you're getting about 30 back so 22 chaos profit per map from just running this breach as a side note to harbingers i think has worked quite nice and then if i have a look at fraction shards we've got eight and it's valuing them at 63 but that's not right because we're gonna wait until we get a fracturing orb and sell that and there's six divines so if we do six divided by 20 it's 0.3 divines per shard so if we times that by 250 it's 75 chaos per fracturing shard and we've got eight so actually these are underrepresented by about 100 c so we've got 600 c in fracturing shards um from harbingers where all we're doing is putting a scarab in every single map there's six chaos so if you look at this i've done about i would say 40 maps with harbinger and i've got this back just from fracturing shards so it's definitely paying for itself it's not something i love because it does take time to do but the returns yeah for me definitely worth doing um, so that's it for this episode. As I say, we're sitting on 66.2 divines. I'm going to go and run another full compass of the Ulnatal Breaches. And at the next episode, I'll hopefully have an Apothecary card and still a decent amount of money in the stash. Um, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.